So for everybody watching the video version right now, do yourself a favor, fast forward to the end and see if Jordan's standing. <laughs> uh, well, see, now I'm just going to stand up for the end of the show just to fuck with people. Hey, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with over here on the left in the Orton Gemvin, over there with the Use Me Please Penguin t-shirt, man pimping our merch, stored at LinuxGamecast.com, Jordan's Fang, and the guy with the haunted curtains. <laughs> don't tease them. They already <laughs> fell once tonight. They don't I mean, need to do fall the, anymore. Do the, do the haunted curtains match the haunted drapes? Oh, no, man. It sounded like you said, do the haunted curtains. Like, yeah, it's the latest dance craze. <laughs> do the haunted... <laughs> I can't do the, the arm motion with that one. No, sorry. Too complex. Together. With the most haunted curtain, Cocaine Voltron. Cocoin Voltron. Co it's our new cryptocurrency. Yes. Yes. Only available at... <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere. No. Bad idea. <laughs> Cocoin.voltron. <laughs> it's a URL now. <laughs> CCV.linuxcan. Don't go there. Don't go there. What's up? What's new, ladies and gentlemen? I have um something that only a few people get to experience. The brave, the bold, the cheap. Yeah. I was waiting for, um, you know, with the Jackbox, I got the 5600G and I did that firmware flash and I was able to put that in a B350 chipset. I'm like, ah, oh, this is amusing. And I was just sitting back waiting. I'm like, I'll get a B550 motherboard when I find a decent price on one on Amazon. And I'm like, hey, we got a decent price on a used one. Hmm. How do you sound? You know, I'm not immediately ruling that out. I'm like, 85 bucks shipped from us, sold by us. I'm like, all right. So that's going to be showing up Monday and I can sit back and Maybe I'll be able to do a video or a live stream like picking peanut butter out of the USB ports or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> or the zip sockets just full of ham. I don't know. Like sunscreen. Mm. Yeah, motherboards. Uh, uh, that that's the base for everything. I don't know if I would go secondhand on those processors. Absolutely. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. You know, the <laughs> motherboard for Threadpooper. The only way we could afford that was the used one. And that one was legitimately dangerous because pins on the MOBO. Like, I spent an afternoon, like, am I messing up? LGA. <laughs> Dude, uh, that was a thing. So, uh, yeah, that's going to show up Monday. There's gonna That's going to get recorded one way or the other in case there's an air conditioner, I mean, a brick inside of there. I'm like, that's not a motherboard. <laughs> just, just angry bees. Yeah, bees. <laughs> you know what? We'd call it even. If I got bees, I'm like... <laughs> Fair, well fair. played <laughs> yeah well played amazon um yeah outside of that uh, oh i saw that uh my everyone's favorite guitar center employee jim if your name's jim i apologize that's my generic name for the person who works at each and every guitar center across the continental united states when he sees the thing and doesn't know what it is he's like fuck it it's 99 dollars," and just <laughs> puts it in the moon category Oh man! Now, now I'm just imagining like like a Nurse Joy, Officer Jenny type situation. Except you walk into a guitar center, and it's just the same dude, no matter like it's where, where. Yeah, it's Jim. It it. I mean, there's two versions of Jim. It's a mixture of either incompetence or just blatant negligence. Like I don't know what this is. Fuck it, get out the door. Or like, oh, this is a stupid thing. We can sell it for this or whatever. I saw another one of those devices, but it's blue. And I'm genuinely having that issue of, A, it, it's cheap enough to just buy it. You know, we're talking like 100 bucks. I'm like, don't really need it, but it's blue. I don't want another blue thing in the rug. <laughs> you, need, you need to color code it so you can, like, accidentally not plug the, un no, not unplug no. the right cable. Complete irrational. It is, it is fate coming back to kick me in the junk, Jordan. And that's what it is, because my favorite for 30 years is when somebody's just rambling about something i'm like oh yeah by the way my favorite color is blue and they're like why i was like well if we're sharing irrelevant information right now <laughs> i just thought i'd chime in and um i feel this is the universe's way of getting back at me it was like yes it's a great value thing that you want blue. to play with blue dab -a -dee, it's dab -a your favorite dab -a color right huh anyway it's not my favorite color is not blue my favorite <laughs> color is dark so hmm. see orange shirt nice bright and dark yeah, then then the Venza, Venza dark winter. He's got the the dark wintry coloring. Oh man, Game of Thrones! It's coming back to us, baby. 
How about you, Pedro and or Jordan? Well, this thing fell out of my chair a couple hours ago, so <laughs> I'm looking for a new chair. <laughs> it's like it's like clearly sheared off. So like, have you this... <laughs> have have you discovered um what it, what job it at? No, but <laughs> if you lean to one side, a, this is, is the there too still, much of a no, that, tilt. <laughs> that's that's what I checked. I'm like, I, I heard the thing drop. I picked it up. I'm like, huh. And I wiggled my butt on the chair a little bit. And I'm like, seems good, but I should probably accelerate <laughs> purchasing a new one before before my luck runs out. So you have no idea what part of the chair that is like? No, absolutely not. I haven't, I haven't looked underneath. Uh, yeah. So that, that's been my exciting week. So for everybody watching the video version right now, do yourself a favor. Fast forward to the end and see Jordan standing. <laughs> Well, see, now I'm just going to stand up for the end of the show just to fuck with people. All right. Yeah. How about you, uh, Pedro Haunted Curtains, Mateus? Yeah, no, I'm not going to hold up the curtains because, well, I already did that tonight. Uh, wouldn't recommend it. But uh, yeah, no, I came into possession of a uh, ThinkPad uh, X220, which is in absolutely how much, how much like... How did you lowball the person on eBay for it? I, I I wasn't on eBay. It was uh, from the office, uh, from what, the oh, decommissioning. Oh. Uh, there's uh, one of the tenants is leaving their offices, uh -huh. and uh, we're the ones that have to decommission them because they just up and fucked off. Uh, so <laughs> uh, everything that they left behind is ours. And this so what one, you're saying is you still haven't found a use for the lock picking? Huh? <laughs> no, they, they left us the keys, so oh. we just have to go through things. <laughs> But yeah, no, it it's in like mint condition. It, it didn't have any um, acid labels or anything on it. It is v in very, very good condition. It looks like it's missing some shit from the bottom. Yes, the battery. Uh -huh. <laughs> battery is right here <laughs> because it's dead. It's If you plug it in, uh, U-Power just says zero watts, zero capacity left. Oh, okay. I guess being in the cupboard for like 11 years because this is a 2011 laptop. <laughs> So to keep uh, on the theme, how much are you currently lowballing people for one of those batteries on eBay? <laughs> I'm trying to get it for under 20 pounds. Okay. <laughs> that's, that, that's, yeah. I already had to spend 10 for the power, uh, the power brick because there was no power brick. It was literally just the laptop there. So, uh, okay. Here's a fair question. <laughs> Is that a yellow USB port? Um... The, no, the ThinkPads the did have no, those. no, no on the side. <laughs> yeah, uh, old ThinkPads did have the uh, yellow USB ports. Other side with a bright yellow thing on it, Pedro. Oh yeah! God damn! <laughs> I didn't even notice that, but yes, that is the uh, yeah. USB two port. Yeah, yeah. The uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, S thirty one because that is right. It's the uh, passive charger. So like, if you have the laptop uh, powered down, it'll still charge off. I uh, those power share. Okay, right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's also allegedly magical. Look it. <laughs> that, that that was that. I uh, my old ThinkPad L four twelve had that as well. Do you know why they quit using those that color? Attracted too many ghosts. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought it, it was because the uh, nope. with the X two forty the power supply was a square yellow uh, thing that looked very much like USB at first glance. Zap. Equally delicious, much like the horse. I don't know. The horse is kind of tasteless these days. You gotta like drown it in hot sauce or soy sauce, cover it in salt, deep fry it. I don't know. It's the steam. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I know what you're thinking, man. It's been a long time since we all got together and played some Half Life. We got our crowbars out. We started smacking some head crabs around. You're not alone. You're absolutely not alone because Half-Life just smashed its concurrent player's record thanks to a little ban. Kemp Hagen, hashtag remember Freeman. It aimed to show Valve that, yes, the internet can coordinate for nanoseconds at a time, get together, and do its thing. So on behalf of the internet, we did it, internet, hashtag we did it, Reddit. 12,280 Half-Life players got together. That new peak, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, breaking the bar event. So that was last year's, and that smashed the Half-Life 2 concurrent player record count. Neat. I, nothing is going to come of this. I don't think anybody thinks anything comes of this. This is like 
maybe just a happy reminder that uh, to Valve's like, yeah, everyone bought it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the hashtag remember Freeman. And honestly, Half Life is a very good game. For the time, it was kind of revolutionary. So, uh, and you can possibly blame it for all the modern uh, military shooters. Uh, but I'd say, I'd say Call of Duty was more to blame for that. No, that really and, Valve, yeah, Call of Duty. Water. You could track that back to Half Life. <laughs> Valve, I want you to go full retro on Half Life Three. I want a duck and cover crowbar simulator. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they just got to make Half-Life 3 in the Gold Source engine, so everything just looks old and crappy again. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, like, yeah, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, every, everyone had an occasion to go and play the OG Half-Life. I guess these days, if you really wanted to experience a story, uh, Black Mesa is the way to go, would you say? Possibly. Possibly not. I, um, you the know, original I have... still holds up, and it's still perfectly playable, yeah. right? So, <laughs> I mean, I have not forgotten those of you who have been on my journey with me through my road to Zen or I will eventually finish playing through all of that, but because I'd never played the original Half-Life. And that game's hard, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it didn't fuck around, that's for sure. It's like I have not opened that game since the last time I live-streamed it. it was probably like six or seven months ago. I know exactly where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 th- I think uh, Freeman's mind kind of like... Really, really did a number on how people's perception of how fragile you are in that game because mm. free, f- Ross Scott is a lot more durable with invincibility turned on than your freaking Gordon mm-hmm. Freeman PC with like a <laughs> hundred health, health that goes away after four bullets. Yeah, like his point was that the HEV suit was bulletproof. Mm. Like, all right, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> well apparently, all the NPCs are firing bullshit. Then, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you can you can absolutely kill Wolverine with the adamantium bullets, of course. Yeah. Sure, man, shoot him in the head; they won't yeah. hurt anything. Proton, we got two yeah. proton stories this week. The regular, ordinary proton, but some of that experimental stuff that Pedro will tell you about in a minute. Right after, yeah, uh, mo- this most tale. most of uh, this new release, uh, Proton Seven Hundred Four, is Wrong the ground up from uh, the experimental uh, version. Links to all this stuff is in our show notes. But you know, our long national nightmare is over. You what can finally play Chuzzle Deluxe. Deluxe. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it sounds like something Mister Foxdog made up. I'm not gonna lie. That's the only reason I brought it up. Chumble Wumble. <laughs> Chumble, Chumble Wumble. Um, Disgaea 5 is playable. I played that on Switch, and it's actually pretty fun. Um, it's exactly as grindy as every other Disgaea game, so if you're looking for something that will consume 200-plus hours of your life, I'd give that a of recommend. it's electronic <laughs> arts. Why not? Why not? Keep piling on games. Ah, uh, right, the bejeweled maybe. clones. Yeah, that would be EA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, nothing nothing too crazy uh, in this release. Not a lot of new features, just game-specific fixes, which is stuff we like to see in Proton, right? But yeah, not, not, Ring, no not a fix that uh, Ben wants to see. Well, I, where's my uh, Spooderman fixes? Because let's uh, all collectively get together and pull our heads out of our asses. That shit does not run well under Linux yet. <laughs> it, uh, it Sometimes it takes a while. I, uh, what was the one? Oh, um, New World, the Amazon MMO that was burning up uh, GPUs. Mm-hmm. When that started working on Linux that first week, it was me playing it and not many other people. So I got to see the really bad performance that comes before uh, the um, the shaders the, are available. The GPU breaking stuff? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a little bit of that experience because I played um, probably like 20% of Horizon Ginger Turbo until um, Joshi did the thing with the DX12. And, you know, I'd put it down. I'm like, it's just too tricky to play. I'm not going to worry about it. And then, just, boom, with well, that flip switched, uh, flip switched, switch flipped. Ha ha. <laughs> and, you know, Spooderman is all over the place. It's all over the And it, it's doing obviously weird things. Like, you enable DLSS, it dramatically increases the texture quality from <laughs> it being off. Like, we're not talking about sharpening. We're talking about overall texture quality, night and day difference. This is not talking about something you squint like you normally do with the DLSS. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's a little different. Like, whoa, this looks way better. Spider- Spider-Man's is uh, DX12, right? You believe so? Maybe? Probably. Probably. I mean, it's a four-year-old game, too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I couldn't tell you offhand. Right. It was a uh, PlayStation 4 game. Yeah. Like the swinging through the cities is not great. And by not great, it'll drop down into the 30s at 1080p on a 3060 with DLSS enabled. 
Yeah. Well, it will, hopefully it'll get better. That That's usually what happens with games running under pressure. I saw people they running run it on the deck. Admittedly, 30. it was like on the lowest setting. At 720p. But, yeah, but it was, it looks smooth enough and they had the um, mango hut on the corners holding between 50 and 60 so okay all right uh, again again though that's with aco that's with that's on an amd card where yes Valve has, like, <laughs> specific optimizations for it like it's not 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 quite apples to apples um yeah that, that's the advantage of uh, the amd gpus nowadays it is very much the valve specific uh optimizations that have gone into it <laughs> well i mean i can read through the pretty much entirety of every review on proton db and people are happy when they can get it to 30. <laughs> I, I mean that, that that's standard for a ps4 game right yeah right? I mean, that's what they're looking for they're that's just what they were targeting yeah. like, all right that's great <laughs> so yeah i'm just waiting i i don't have to play it right now it's a little because you know i paid the iron price for it i'm like oh, i'd like to get some more use out of this but it's not a great experience just yet but I, i'll still wait maybe it'll be in proton experimental uh, not not price. quite yet but uh, it is uh the, the of course with the uh 704 version containing most of what was an experimental uh there's a bunch of new stuff in experimental which is always great to see uh with this version they have now fixed uh revolt and vermintide 2 apparently vermintide 2 is still a little bit iffy and uh if, if you're going to run revolt absolutely it's an awesome game, but use our VGL instead. It runs much better on the deck. That's how I've been running it, and it's amazing. Uh, the, um, the the other thing that jumped out at me was the improved video playback in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Yes, that game, whenever uh, you hit a cutscene, it, it would chug. Perfectly smooth. The rest of the game was perfectly smooth. You hit a cutscene. <laughs> so, yeah, they fixed that. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, if you're uh, speaking of AMD cards, if you're on AMD now, uh, you can actually get uh, in-game uh, for Halo Infinite. Now, uh, you might be thinking, hey, can't you do this already with Proton GE? Yes, you can. But, you know, mainline Proton catching up is always a good thing. Uh, yeah, Vermintide. Speaking, speaking of games I paid the iron price for, and then lo and behold, I can actually play them now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still, still a little unstable if you're not the host. And yeah, um, I was able to log in through Elite Dangerous, but the game is still borked for me. Every every couple months, I'll go reinstall it and be like, <laughs> can I get in game? No? <laughs> Fuck you, <Aww>. Frontier. <laughs> they fixed the launcher, to be fair. Launcher's fixed. Okay. All right. I think it's always important <laughs> to keep your eye out on the Proton game updates because you run into things you thought you'd never be able to play like um, Duke Nukem Forever. Mm -hmm. like admittedly i played that for 10 seconds I'm like ah, I, I got to play it and um rise to the triad remake like that didn't work forever and it finally started working what about revolt though i mean uh it, it, does the online and everything work with the built-in version no, that you get out of state they, uh the if you use rvgl you can use rv house okay uh, not, what I asked. A, not what i asked yes <laughs> but the version that's currently on steam that still uses the old um multiplayer system uh -huh. which you can do direct ip connections okay but i don't actually know if it works because i haven't used the old system um so I mean, i'm just, just trying to be RV realistic because 99 percent of the people who would be thinking about revolt <laughs> click the play button and like, <laughs> no no download this other nope uh, if you just click the play button, it will work. A single player is fine. Uh, multiplayer, you're still dealing with the old system. There is no central server. There never was, to be fair. So okay, yeah. <laughs> no, no game spy arcade or anything. No, mm. you can it, do actually, browser. that's what RV House did. It, it created. It was a third party thing that gave everyone a hub to create servers and join other people. <laughs> well, do you right. think we'll be able to track? Uh, playtime of how many people got a hold to the actual Revolt client during the winter sale? <laughs> I don't know if they are doing it that granularly, like on a per game basis, but you can uh, check how many seconds, or you will probably will be able to check how many seconds once the uh, the winter sale comes in. Uh, Pavel Jundik, uh, the expo, as you may know him, uh, the person behind SteamDB, decided, um, you know what, it's, there's this uh, year in review page uh, that I've managed to data mine. Let's let's see if I can poke at the API. And as it turns out, he did. Uh, and you see the breakdown if you're looking at the video version. There's total playtime in seconds, VR playtime, uh, Linux playtime seconds, uh, 
deck sessions, uh, Linux desktop sessions, Mac OS sessions, Windows sessions, whatnot. They're all there. V- They're, very nice um, number of six of uh, deck sessions. Yeah, <laughs> 69 yeah. of them. But uh, as he points out, this currently is uh, per user. Uh, he, could, he could only find the the info about himself so I, it would be nice if someone managed to find a way to get at least of the public steam ids collate all of that information and uh, just paint a pretty picture even if it's you know completely off just paint a pretty picture i like valve could have an intern do this over the weekend but yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the actual numbers because they have them what do you think they're really planning though man i mean because i i would like to see like what playtime and everything else is per game. I think that's valuable information. It's not like the competitors, like Epic isn't going to gain anything by Valve making those numbers public. <laughs> yeah, it was, might, might be it might be an interesting thing on the store page to be like, people have played approx on average about X number of hours of this game. That yeah. might be like, I, I don't know if it's like a useful metric, but it would be interesting to know. I mean, you, you already have, if this is only going to be, visible to the person then you already know your own playtime because you just go to the library and it gives it to you right there. yeah but i want to know your playtime pedro <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, I, I, I my steam you. profile is public you can go look <laughs> couple of new games this week actually we got a bunch of new games to talk about this week uh don't know what happens this week but like hey let's release some new games starting off with something that I played in the uh, Steam preview thing. I'm pretty sure I did. Like, not the previous one, but uh, the one before that. I'm talking about Neo Dash. It's drifting. It's distance. It's a card game. It's also single player. More <laughs> physics platformers with wheels. And one dude made all this. Um, single player. It's clocking in, though. Here's one thing I was looking at. Uh, regularly $15.99, which is 1.4 Hollow Knights. Uh, that... That's a bit. That's a bit. Um, it looks like there's a map editor, though, so you can make your own standalone experience. I don't know if there's any type of, like, letterboards or anything along those lines, uh, which, no, it's just forever alone, single-player mode. Hmm. As far as it looks, yeah, looking down the side, there's achievements, partial controller support, Steam Cloud for the saves in the deck. That's very important nowadays. And Apparently the they got some uh, Monster Cat tracks in here, too. I, I know, that name. Very good, I know that name from Rocket League, and that's it. That's literally it. <laughs> it looks very good, and uh, yeah, you, if you were looking at the video version, you saw the video, um, the trailer. It's drift stunts. It, it's super distance cart. <laughs> yeah, d- dis- distance minus the multiplayer. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Moral of the story, uh, go by Turbo Golf Racing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that one seems to be doing very, very well. <laughs> Pretty decently. Now, this next one is not a joke, but we're going to turn it into one. Because when I first saw this, just looking at the art style, I was thinking of, what was the game from uh, Frozen Bite? Was it Shodan? Sh- uh, Shadwin. 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 Yeah. That's, uh, for whatever reason, like castles moving around, like hiding and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, we're talking about Climb Challenge Castle. Description. <laughs> Prepare yourself. A player needs to climb the building by clinging and climbing to the walls. Now, this is currently 40% off its normal $13.99 price, which you're looking at it. And I'm like, all right. You know, I mean, it doesn't look terrible or anything like that, but maybe climbing castles would get boring. Then you get to the video and find out, nay, climbing castles would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, this really would be because look at this. Look at this. This is like, Yee. imagine assassin's creed on the n64 <laughs> but worse um yeah. i mean it looks like a half-functioning prototype that somebody hammered out like I, we're not kidding this is full 1080p 60 baby and maybe you're getting like 12 13 frames per second maybe <laughs> yeah it, it really the way does that look the like cloth jumps around. Around and oh yeah it just, just, it just goes up yeah uh, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. It, 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 it really looks like someone took the colossus out of shadow of the colossus also, yeah, that, that trailer frame rate is so fucking bad. I don't Yeah, no, know. it's like, oh, you got to have a video on a store page, but no one said anything about not overloading the encoder when you're this, recording yeah, it. It, it, doesn't, this, it doesn't have to this be This is good one video. of those rare times, you know, normally, yes, we'll chastise you a little bit lovingly for not having a video. This is one of those times you're showing like, it's okay. Don't worry Maybe about you shouldn't it. have yeah. any. <laughs> we won't tell anyone if you will. 
<laughs> Bulanchi. Yeah. All right. Fine. Pillow fight at my place. You guys ever had a pillow fight? That- yeah. Okay. How bad did you? Okay. All right. How do you do a pillow fight? Like, haha, we're playing a pillow or like, I'm trying to dethrone somebody from their feet. <laughs> uh, the latter, obviously. You, you stuff the pillow right at the end of the case, and then you whack someone on the side with it. Yeah. Yeah, except I was the really skinny, really small one at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was the one that got knocked off his feet. I thought you were going to say you were always the pillow. So, But, <laughs> but Pe- Pedro, so my, my experience was, as the fat kid, they all gang up on you. It's like trying to take down a fucking brontosaurus or something. Yeah, they gang up on you because they need multiple people to take you down. With me, yeah. I just get swiped from one of the slightly bigger kids, and away I go. All right. <laughs> Well, welcome being, back to childhood trauma cast. <laughs> we're talking about pillow fights, man. Action multiplayer, easy to play party game where you take pillow fights with your frenemies to the next level. Make your sleepless nights memorable. I can think of other ways by being fluffy. Oh, just like us. Fluffy and deadly. <laughs> oh, all right. Here's what I got to say about this. Okay. You, we, let's, let's check out some of the art here because they got a nice little animated, you know, 3D. I mean, that looks good, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's a couple of pillows. They got their guns. They got some silencer. Two got shot. <laughs> no witnesses. No, the pillow's bleeding out. For the, shh, it's gonna be okay. Then just gonna just gonna teabag them. Then we see the end game. Uh, I mean, if, yeah, that 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 makes it. Even if your 3D models don't look very good, you just put that fixed top-down perspective, and away you go. There, you don't have to worry. About I it think anymore. the 3D model. I completely different take completely because i think somebody on this team 100 percent knows how to art because you look at that i mean that you got to know what the hell you're doing to just stick this together to do the animation rigging for this and texturing and all that which doesn't look bad at all but again let's go back to this first video you got somebody that needs to art maybe you need to get somebody that knows how to do the gameplay bit because yeah that looks horrible Gameplay wise, it looks like something out of a Newgrounds Flash game, and I think I've played right. this exact Newgrounds Flash game. But you know, you know what this game does have online fucking multiplayer, oh, which fuck. is that mandatory. You know, if you're gonna make a party game in 2020x, add some online multiplayer, my friend. And this this guy did it, and it's got a level editor. Yeah, mm-hmm. win win. A cross platform multiplayer. Yeah, we'd like to see all of that. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is the big difference right there because all three of us were looking in there like that looks comically mediocre. Not necessarily. Oh, it's got online. Okay, you know what? We could probably make it fun somehow. Yeah, and and like that. That's the thing, game designers. I'm I'm gonna talk to you directly. Online multiplayer can save your less than stellar experience because if you play do things with friends, it's actually fun. That that's usually the best way to do it. You just throw more people at it, and it's like you guys try and <laughs> figure this out. <laughs> no, we try and try and again, baby. I mean, we have the entirety of the train series as evidence. Yes. <laughs> um. But so, Pedro, tell us about Nintendo's legal department. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they're probably not going to sue these guys because they already released the first one, and, uh, and here's Blossom Tales 2 uh, from Castle Pixel. Uh, it's, you know, big kudos to uh, Castle Pixel, actually. Arr. They sent us some keys. Uh, and yeah, it is Blossom Tales 2 is, uh, what if, you know, you play the Zelda in Zelda? There you go. That, that, that. <laughs> that, that is some Game Boy I Color I wanted to be Zelda. Yoshi. Why can't I be Yoshi? <laughs> you gotta be a Namekian if you want to be Yoshi. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but it like, is. Uh, it's currently ten uh, percent off. Like just about every single game we talked about it, the ones that were for sale. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, what, what's what's neat about this is Blossom Tales One did not have a native Linux port. So you know, oh. good on you guys for putting one out for the sequel. Yeah, I had to go back and like play around with it. I just take a look. I haven't had a chance to play the game, but I mean, yeah, it. it to me, the feeling I got from this was because uh, I stopped playing Zelda when it peaked. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about Zelda 2, baby. Now, uh, just like, you know, I've touched, I, I've fucked around with like the Zelda Link to the, what, what was on the SNES? Link to the Past, yeah. Link to the Past, I was right with that. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> it, it looks like someone who like never played Link to the Past had described it, had that game described to them by a rabid fan and designed a game around it. I mean, it's that close, but things are just like slight Walterverse in this. You know, I can't exactly put my, Try hard force on it, but did you see the animation swings on that sword? Yeah, the, uh, they seem to have the charge for the big 
rotating. This looks fine, but like her sword just kind of appears and slowly waves around. The arrows look tight. I'm down with that. That's a Zelda, that's a Zelda level shit. That's these are multiple Zelda bosses. Hey, yeah, man, no, it, it just looks like out. Zelda. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you know, you know, if you're gonna plagiarize, plagiarize something good, right? Right. I mean, you yeah. got a good. If you have a good base to work, how much is this? Uh, about fourteen hundred. That's fine. That's like yeah. less than hollow. Well, about the same price. All right. Re- the, the reviews are pretty solid. People are saying like the story isn't great, but like the gameplay is solid, and that's really what you want, right? Link to the past. Uh, it's a video a super game. Solid. Yes. Yep. Gameplay kind of ha- needs to be there. I think one of but, the nice things, I mean, you want to bring this up though, um, SDO game controllers, which are good. So you know, that's going to work, but here, here, think about system requirements. It's kind of refreshing to see a hipster pixel game break out things like, Oh yeah. By the way, if you have an Athlon 64 X two, you can still play this thing, man. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you can see the Julep COS. So you know exactly who did the Linux board on that one. <laughs> or, they, <laughs> or they just used FNA. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they copy pasted the system requirements from the document where where Ethan keeps them. Well, actually, Pedro. <laughs> well, uh, I know it was Ethan because they mentioned it in the email when they sent us keys. <laughs> oh well, then in that Dog case, <laughs> on hard. So much for not having facts and being refuted by <laughs> hardcore facts. <laughs> oh well, I'm you know, need you know, maybe, for that man, yeah. Uh, I, I need I need to I need to soothe my bruised ego. Maybe I can buy a bundle. I got the Linux Thrills and Chills bundle. Oh man, how many volumes? Well, Linux and Thrill. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, only one volume so far, but it does come with five games that you can. Is this like doing the Netflix things with pig, penguins? Because you probably get arrested. I mean, not unless you're the Carmageddon people, they do penguins. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, there uh, there's a couple of games included in Linux and Thrills. This is just put together by a couple of devs who have produced Linux ports of their games, and they want to, you know, take advantage of that market who are willing to, you know, buy things when it's offered to them. So uh, we got a couple of games here. Death into T- Trouble, which is a precision platformer. Stone Story RPG, which is an auto RPG that is done entirely through ASCII art. It's a bit of a, it's it's interesting, at least. I don't know That's if the it's one 1999 worth, about. but. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Observation Duty is a Five Nights at Freddy clones. Uh, Zodiac Cats is a um, is a game where you like have a, a scrambled image and you have to like rearrange blocks to make the actual image. I totally buried the lead. Save room. This is the one. This is the one, man. <laughs> it is Resident Evil Inventory Management, the game, which is fucking hilarious. Yep. Um, <laughs> try, try try and fit all the pieces into the inventory so that you can go fight Albert Wesker or something. I mean, I guess uh, I my entirety of like Resident Evil games is probably like six hours. I've just nibbled on them a couple of times to see how they run under Linux. And I saw that. I'm like, that reminds me. Wasn't that kind of... And I went to the show notes. I'm like, aha. Okay, yeah. yeah. How much? How much? Individually for this. Well, oh, uh, in, in, individually, right. it's four bucks. You can get the entire uh, thing for about 30 bucks Canadian. Mm-hmm. 26 um, 20 freedom units uh so we'd be saving 875 and yeah support those yeah. who support linux like if you see things that you like go for it yeah no the stone story rpg is that one curious the the, the one that's making me the most curious <laughs> uh well i mean we can blame uh west of loathing for that can't we <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. you kind of raised the bar of like oh stick figures this gotta be good i <laughs> played kingdom of loathing uh on the browser for the longest time and then they went and made West of Loathing which is like Fallout and the other older CRPGs but with stick figures and it's amazing <laughs> but yeah the, uh, the these guys uh, reached out to us right then yeah uh, they, they sent in an email like a uh, couple of weeks ago and like hey we're going to be releasing this bundle and I wrote back I'm like hey it's kind of hard to tell people thing, anything about it send me a link when it goes live and earlier this we like hey it's live see Transaction completed. Neat. <laughs> it's amazing how that works, isn't it? If you reach yeah. out, communicate. We're not psychic. <laughs> oh man, that you don't you don't pay us enough to read your mind. Coming up next, wine, man. We're we're whining about that because GLibc has some problems. Unstable wine. <laughs> you keep uh, teasing, and it will probably fall at some point because I already had to fix it once today. So Shoot the X Files music. I, it, listen, it may I'm very thinking well right now. The only thing going through my head is like, all right, difficulty in DaVinci Resolve and post to do like a force ghost, <laughs> but a force ghost. 
the, the, the only thing going through my brain right now is, come on, curtain drop. Come on, curtain drop. Come on, curtain drop. <laughs> yeah, Just trying to well, will it uh, down. In the meantime, before the curtain oh, drops, Jordan, Wouldn't why don't you tell the lovely like people the, how to... If, they, if the curtain like went all Doctor Strange cloak on his fucking face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wrapped, wrapped around his head. Man. And, and again, this is this is why we need a budget. If you want if you want to help us hire some starving Disney CG artists to do this shit for us, head on over to Patreon.com. I would very Netflix much Game love Pets. to make that proposal like hear me out all right there's a reason we need this high end um <laughs> listen, listen listen we won't work you to death unlike disney no. um but yeah uh, patreon.com slash linux teamcast join up you get some cool stuff like access to our discord which you can also get by subbing to us on twitch twitch.tv slash linux gamecast uh in discord you get access to the pre pre super shows and where ven pedro and i talk for an hour about sandman and how we're waiting for the new season to fucking come out already. Cause God damn it. I'm already uh, season was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Here, here's another. Oh, you know what? Tune in and I'll tell you a little cheat where you can listen to series two already. Ah, uh-huh. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can also get uh, early show note access where we, where you can watch us congeal the show together over the course of the week. And then you can participate. You can, yeah, you could participate. You can issue story suggestions. Our you can and even Foxy do the are Fox Dog special, which is like wait until we've already started the show and try to drop stuff in. And you're like, sure, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not happening. I mean, I mean, the the, Fo- the Foxy special is coming up. Um, but yeah, uh, you can also get access to Uncut Vods three days early. You get your uh, you can RSVP for game streams. Uh, I'm occasionally if I can get people around do Back for Blood on Thursdays. Uh, Ven does Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays. I want to say, everybody, we got uh, so we got about four spots left for that. If mm. you want to pop in and do it, we'd love to have you. That takes place at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hop in our Discord. If you're listening, you can do it if you're a Twitch sub or a patron at any level. 14 new tracks each and every week. We practice on Tuesdays. It's a good excuse. It's, we call it our adult scheduled screwing off time. We get okay. together, we hang out, and we do some physics platforming, which is the right way to look at it. It's just that our physics platformer happens to have wheels, and we come back on Friday because we get our own custom private server that plays super sweet copyright-free tunes <laughs> that you can jam out to, man. The best of the best. <laughs> I won't get you DMCA'd. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we do a rounds match, which, it's again, it's not racing. It's uh, we Everyone can win. We get a Joker thing, which usually, like, Place five, place six, you get a sea monster, which is tree tree fifty points, which is more than first place, which is kind of difficult. And it's fun watching people try to game that. But on rounds mode, it's more important to finish the map. Then you got tryhards like me and Ogie and Jill now mm. trying to get around the map real quick, which means we end up flying off and not getting any points whatsoever. So it's turning into a very interesting time. And plus we got the after show for turbo golf racing as well. Love to see you there. Yep. There, I've done my plug for it, everyone on Team Trackmania. Ah. Yeah, uh, speak, speaking of uh, Twitch subs, uh, we got to thank Gamotron for uh, sticking with us for 11 months, inexplicably, still keeping on. What about Don N? Yeah, Don, Don in, in the middle Don, of Don, the, Don the start of the segment. Popped up. Man. This is, a, this is, our, uh, this is our spinoff from Malcolm in the Middle. This is going to be yeah, Don no, in the middle. Sp- speaking, of the, speaking of the Foxy special, right in the middle of it. Uh, yeah, so thanks a bunch, <laughs> Don Do you M. know what's getting a spinoff? Kite Man? No. Uh-uh. Weird. Weird spinoff. Ally McBill. Like, that now? The Dancing Baby, yes. The, wait, The Dancing eh? Baby is getting a spinoff? <laughs> no, I, unfortunately not, but that show that spawned the original internet email meme 3D mm-hmm. thing, yeah, that's getting a spinoff for some reason because that's so culturally relevant. I, I mean, they, they had Fuller House a couple of years ago. I don't know. Uh, we got a, we got a store. Uh, store.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> See, when you say that's... Fuller House, I just think like an obese doctor house. L- l- listen, <laughs> if you want to buy t-shirts with Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen's face on them, <laughs> you've come to the wrong place because the only t-shirts we have with faces on them are our face. Uh, you can buy a Use Me Penguin shirt. I'm wearing one right now. It fits reasonably well. Again. <laughs> ah, <here's me. laughs> uh, yeah uh, we, we got stickers we got coffee cups good stuff we got wish zones as well if you head on over to linuxgamecast.com put your mouse over the support button i have one jill has one pedro has one ven has one and if you buy stuff off vens you can even get what your name have? in lights behind by the way yes you can judge me i mentioned i need a new crimping tool really expensive motherboards fuck this thing 
They don't have, <laughs> all they have is the 16 core. I know there's a 12 core AMD. Fucking release it. I can't afford that one. NVMe drives, uh, blue shit for the rack, as one does. Now, <laughs> let's see. Shit. Jordan is in I need really of a need chair. I really need this chair, please, before I die. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the die so much, but the chair is definitely something, and he likes green shit. And uh, R4, whatever that uh, SDHC, yeah, that thing. Pedro needs bars. R- he needs <laughs> bars. <shit. laughs> Monitor stat. All of that is to protect, <laughs> to fend off the curtains, just mm-hmm. in case. Uh, in, in crucial... You gotta have that there. <laughs> It's well, if the curtains do come crashing down again, th- 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 something will catch them. Now I'm a little sad because the Xiaomi electrically. See, I, I love something with the potential to harm and or maim. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> apparently who, who, Uven who, is in the US, so he doesn't have the option to gift me that. But if posted, you do, don't. <laughs> who posted like the fastest unicycle or something in Discord a couple weeks? Or oh, the 87 no? mile an hour yeah, one. Yeah, 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 no, that'll get you killed. <laughs> yeah, get, get one of those. <laughs> Same reason I get rid of my motorcycle. All that shit that's supposed to be wired your brain that says slow the fuck up, malfunctioning. Call, yeah, call, call, what do they call, it? call of the void. Where All it's that, like, I could just drive into traffic it, right it, now. No, no, no. I'm talking about like the safety mechanisms that are supposed to go. You need to slow down for your kickers. Mine are like in unison patting me on the back going, wee. Wee, yo, motherfucker, wee. Right. Um, I can't be around stuff like that. Um, God damn, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? We appreciate all your support. Uh, you enable us to buy very, very dangerous vehicles and almost murder ourselves with them for your entertainment. That's we why go. we do it. Keeping us yes. loud, live, and independent, <laughs> ad-free. That's what we do. Strange business model. We put it out free. Like, hey, if you like it, kick us some bucks. Let us keep doing what we enjoy. And maybe we'll be around for another 10 years with our canes and walkers. And we have, like, um, yeah, l- legit. Two, two well, I'll probably. I'll either have a walker or a hip replacement in the next 10 years, man. So. <laughs> Good people. Don't sell it short. No, yeah, the, you know, you know, one leads to another, right? If you, yeah, it depends on how the hip replacement goes. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you, get, you gotta get the you gotta get the ceramic ones. I, I I learned about hip replacements when my dad got one, so that's, right. that's fun. It's uh, slightly less barbaric than it used to be, but let's talk about why Win Thirty Two is the only stable ABI on Linux. Yes, and uh, you probably saw this blog post from uh, Eric Heiler, which, well, uh, this argument has been made multiple times. Jordan actually uh, brought it up when Proton started rolling around and it became a thing. It's like, yeah, Win32 is the only stable ABI on Linux. And, well, uh, this came about because... Explain to me. Uh, I've heard of an API, but you keep saying ABI. Yes, this is the binary interface for the compiled binaries, not the programming interface like you'd get on the source code. API, ABI. So, yeah, that's application binary interface. That's what it stands for. But it is, you probably know uh, why this came about, because glibc236, yes, uh, was uh, basically they dropped DT hash, which... Uh, it's had- your fault for using the thing we told you to use. <laughs> Shut up. Yes, which was the default for the longest time. And, well, uh, they replaced it with the, the one improved version what uh, they created about 15 years ago or so which is dt new hash which um basically is better and it it has lower latency it's faster it it's just better all around so i can kind of see why they did that but in doing so everything that was using the original default which was dt hash just didn't work anymore stuff like easy anti cheat stuff like hollow knight you know, that <laughs> Ven keeps using uh, Hollow Knight as a comparison game for things. Hollow Knight just stopped working because, yes, they con- were using... Hollow Knight is a unit of currency measurement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you assign value to things with worth, and Hollow Knight is worth 14 bucks, apparently. Yeah. fourteen ninety nine. yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, the Eric goes into detail as, like, as to why the regression happened, and, you know... I'll be honest, I'm I'm kind of inclined to agree with the general sentiment because compared to glibc, Wine and Win32 by extension has been a lot more stable when it comes to backwards compatibility. In fact, up to at least Windows 7, Windows itself had very good backwards compatibility. 
especially in games, something which Linux didn't have. If you go back to the previous, um, or the, the very first uh, Humble Bundle, Humble Indie Bundle, that one, most of the, the games in that bundle just don't work now. And Baby girl, at you, least you two can, of you, them are GLIPC ABI. You can roll this show back <laughs> 10 years ago, 10 years ago, and we would be saying, man, Linux really sucks for backwards compatibility. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because of stuff like this. It just gets changed with absolutely no concern as to what it may affect. I see why they did it, but this is not yeah. cool. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, ab absolutely. This is sort of the perils when you have, like, open source uh, dependencies, right? Um, upstream or upstream communication with uh, downstream consumers downstream consumers is kind of crucial because um, if glibc if the glibc people had made more noise about hey we are deprecated uh, dt hash please everyone move over to dt gnu hash um maybe we wouldn't have run into this problem i could also r uh, rightfully throw um the wine proton whoever devs uh, who are working on the eac integration under the bus because you know maybe they should be up to speed on the latest and greatest developments of the platform but, that they're i mean in against. their defense how the fuck were they supposed to know too Right, but again, there's, I, mo there's, it is mostly GLibc's fault. But you know, the 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 EAC folks are not entirely blame free. I well. can see their argument of like we did the thing that they said we should do. Yeah, it was the default, and they dropped it. Yeah, but, yeah. just drop and, and, no, like not even fall back to the different one. No, no, just drop the DT hash table completely. Oh yeah. Okay. No, it's it, it it's it's not it's not it's not a great situation all around. And I I don't know about I don't know about Win32 being the more stable API. I think it's definitely at this point though it's definitely the ones that people are most used to dealing with. It's the network effect. People uh there's too much forward momentum, right? And the fact the fact the fact that like Win32 is this kind of bloated mess speaks to <laughs> it's not it's not super stable. It they just haven't really removed everything and it's like this sort of tricky towers s counterbalance. Uh, we we can we can see that when like oh we have to replicate specific bugs in Win32 for this you know Windows application to run under Wine. Yeah, I ask a Wine developer like you see that every time Wine comes out with a new release, and you're like, geez, man, because you will see just obscure things like who would even find that? I have but very specific like this one thing in this one application, and they fixed it. All right, yeah. So, so like, when 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 you when you boil it down, I think yeah, there there, I, and I and I had been saying it for years as Pedro mentioned. Yeah, there there is a good argument to say that like Win thirty two is the API for just making games. Period. At this point, if you're going to be running making games for a computer, target that. Um, it's not the best technical solution, but it is the one that is there. Right? It's not, it's but you'll have feature complete. <laughs> I mean, I'll fair. say this, you're absolutely going to have the motherfuckers <laughs> sent from their Windows 11 machine saying, no, you need all native Linux editors. And I feel you on that a little bit. Actually, I do. That's preferable. That's something we're going to get to. I do believe. But this all, believe it or not, hinges on the success of the Steam Deck. It really does. And what comes after the Steam Deck and what's adopted beyond that? Because that, that's going to get commercialized. But hmm, wait a minute. Can I get better performance if we do native? versus Proton. We've been over that in shows multiple times, but this was a very strange read for me because, you know, I've been playing games on Linux using Wine, but back in my day, we called it Wine X. You might even know it under Sedega. Remember that? Dude, we're talking like 2002, 2003, so get right the fuck off my lawn. Now, back then, what was it? It, it was like part neat, part novelty. You know, you could mm -hmm. get... Uh, Alice, the original Alice uh, launch, kind of, and move around with 3D acceleration. It was something that you got your flatmate, like, hey, come, look at this. Huh, you think we'll ever? No, we'll never actually play the game proper, but, I mean, that's pretty fucking cool, isn't it? Now, I didn't know it was going to be the default. Like, welcome to 2022, man. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's the default way to play your Linux games on your handheld from Valve. In 2022 and i immediately had to think imagine imagine having to go back to 2002 2003 and wrap your own mind around what i just said yeah. like no the future is your linux gaming handheld from valve you mean the what crowbar what yes <laughs> uh, you're going to be using wine this thing that barely opens you to play that's the best way to what about a handheld who's gaben and 
Oh, you know, Microsoft employee, Gabe Newell. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, this as much as it stings when you read something like this. And again, I feel where you're coming from brothers and sisters that are out there about this hot yet accurate take shit like this you know even linus says don't break user space and I'm like hold my fucking compiler bitch boom we're gonna do it <laughs> it's one of the reasons we're unable to have nice things and like this fucked up some projects i mean this fucked up yep. eac and a lot of people were left like valves going Maybe we should have stuck where I'm going. Oh. And, I, and i mean like on on and here here's the thing too is that a lot a lot the the reality of this a lot everyone who got hit that by this is likely on a rolling release distro or something that is tracking relatively close to the you know cutting edge, um, which isn't the case for a lot of people running Linux. Uh, and you know you know how they got through the, got around this on Windows they just ship all the dependencies with the binaries. That's basically what Flatpak is doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know bring bring your own bring your own libc right so. Like we're, we're, we're seeing the steps in place to like get to that future where we have a, a, a path to like long-term support for Linux binaries, but it's, we still have a ways to go. And I mean, it's all kind of things you might notice uh, if you watch this on Twitch, we don't have closed captions right now because the binary build for the closed captioning program, guess what? <laughs> I was going to ask about that actually. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there, there you go. That's a one version of, and that's not something that, <laughs> that's not a thing you just upgrade on your Linux install. It's not, um, I mean, you can, you can try it. <laughs> you might be lucky and it might work or it, you won't even be able to get back into your operating system. <laughs> uh, not an adventure we want to have on the production box. Now yeah. we're all familiar <laughs> with go dough, like dough, go, go, go dough, cash, go, 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 yeah, go, go dough. Yeah. Do I have the penguin still around? Penguin, are you still around? <laughs> no, wait. <gasps> Here he is. Hey, hey there he is. is. Marine. Yeah, the go dough, baby. <laughs> this comes from TechCrunch. All oh, this is going to be in our show notes after the fact. Uh, LettySeamcast.com. How W4 plans to monetize the Godot game engine using Red Hat's open source playbook. That's right. Their plan is to get bought by IBM, right? I mean, that's, that's one way to make money. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that'll keep you in business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check this out. W4 Games CEO is one of the founding creators of Ghetto. Before you flip out, like, ah, oh, commercial, bad, blah. They have just uh, got 8.5 mil in seed funding to make Ghetto a big boy, to make it more palatable to game developers. And they're going to be trying to help corporations adopt Ghetto effectively by doing the thing Red Hat does. They give them somebody to blame. Something goes wrong, you can turn to somebody like, hey, you offer the support, fix the thing. You're like, right on it, boss. And like another big thing is help. This is something, this is like a big issue with Godot, whether or not you realize it, getting games on consoles. Because in order to do that, you got to sign some NDA stuff and all that. It's not going to be compatible with licensing. They're going to be able to help with that by porting a game over for you, which pretty neat. Uh, I like the idea of having an official service department because anytime you have um, leveraged something, be it for your company or be it for your hobby or like you got open source software, you, you get open source support. I mean, you're not paying anything for either. So you get what you get and that can make you do things like buy commercial software. There's a reason I got DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that. And this is going to be the equivalent of that for Godot. You know, if like, hey, we're working on this, we, we can invest in this. The code is available. We don't have to mess around with it. And, you know, no one understands why we were using Unity in the first place other than everybody else was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, now now that Unity has gone out of their way to make themselves look real bad, everyone's looking around for an alternative. And, you know, W4 is there to catch those customers as they fall. And I mean, like, the, the, the whole console port thing, like Ben mentioned, has been a recurring complaint about Godot. The fact that, like, they can't include the Switch SDK or the, uh, or, like, the Xbox SDK. Uh, have, having a body to assist with that definitely makes Godot a lot more attractive. And using a Red Hat mo Red, Has Red Hat S model of saying, like, hey, we will provide you builds. Here's the source code if you want to do this yourself. Hey, we'll even take your, we'll even take your changes if you want to fix stuff. Um, is I, I think is, is a good model that, I mean, uh, Unreal is utilizing it. They have a lot more licensing surrounding it and they're using a proprietary mm -hmm. license, but hey, they realized 
giving people access to the fucking source code enables them to do cool shit with the engine that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Look at what guys like Alex have been doing with uh, Project Heartbeat, right? Where they're re- rewriting an entirely new input system from scratch to help with latency. Yep. That kind of stuff is impossible on Unity. And having people who know uh, the engine inside and out, uh, when you run into a problem, you can just go to them because you're paying them for support and going, what's up with that? And they uh, deal with it, and you can just keep focusing on the game, the thing that you're actually developing. Well, even so, in a business, having that support there is the one thing that will get you in the door, at least. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's and, probably going to be worth the money. <laughs> and even, even from, like, thinking about Godot as a project benefiting from this, developing open source bo- software is fucking expensive. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the tools don't cost anything, but like that expertise and that time has a value attached to it. Right. Uh, and, you know, ha- being able to derive some funding from it to like better improve the engine, I think is going to be a good thing long term. Yes. And yeah, so basically they're just trying to get a bye bye IBM. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> That's a or, joke. Or, or Microsoft. Microsoft's doing all the buying these days. Microsoft yeah, has the sure. Obsidian. Uh, Microsoft loves Godot, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, hang on. Who? Uh, what was it? The Nordic. Uh, yeah, the Embracer Nordic group. Games. Oh, Embracer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Didn't they just buy everything this week? They they bought Lord of the Rings, man. Like mm-hmm. they bought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you know what? Remember the um, like what would have happened if uh, Marvel had the IP rights to the Lord of the Rings and it showed like the thirty different movies? Oh yeah. And yeah. then again, I'm sitting back. I'm like. I a I want two Gimli movies. I'd watch that. Uh, also, like <laughs> Gimli uh, two Dwarf yeah. Harder, <laughs> and uh, like a Tom Bombadil. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, give me one of those. I'll take one of those. I, I, I want to see what you come up with. I want a Tom with. Bombadil movie in the style of Cats. Okay, like like the, like <laughs> with the, the really the weird CG cat suits. Like, yes, <laughs> weird, weird and horny. Exactly <laughs> okay. what Tolkien intended. <laughs> Don't even waste your time submitting that. Uh, Horizon right. Zero. Linux. So this is real neat. So this is this is a project in two parts. And the goal of which is to allow native ARM64 Linux to run switch binaries. So uh, to get that working, uh, there is a fork of the, of the ARM64 Linux kernel called Horizon Linux uh, that modifies a lot of the standard behavior in like syscalls and memory timing and like uh, queuing and shit to play nicer with what the sh- uh, with what the switch expects from like memory management, etc. cetera. Uh, and then there is another service called Mizu, which takes all the uh, emulated services uh, that would run in Yuzu. And then instead of running them through an emulated subsystem, just forwards it directly to the appropriate syscalls that like, like if you were running on native switch horizon OS and this is this is really cool. And we were talking a little bit about this in the in between. Functionally, like I don't think this actually gets you a lot. Um, there are there are ports of Switch games that run uh, like you know if you want to play The Witcher on on Linux, you're probably gonna want to run like Witcher three online. You're not gonna run the Switch. You're not gonna run Switcher because that's like the inferior version. But um, being able to do this is definitely really cool. Um, and just being able to run games on ARM Linux is it, ARM Linux is not usually a thing you Switch associate games with games on ARM Linux. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> so it's, cool. It's directly from the kernel. You have that binary compatibility with what Switch? That that that's crazy. But uh, I seriously kudos on the patience and the knowledge that took to do that. Major kudos. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit in back going like, but what? What does one do with eight-year-old mobile phone hardware? <laughs> well, you, you, well, you don't need to run it on that eight-year-old mobile phone phone hardware. You can run it on nice modern like that that like thirty-two core board out of China that like we all want that we can't buy because they don't have mm-hmm. a price listed on it. <laughs> oh man, uh, you know what? I, I have a feeling like this. Uh, even when Jordan was explaining to me, he's like, I'm not, I don't completely get my brain meets around it, but. I do have enough intelligence. Like this is probably going to be useful as fuck in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially for preservation when Nintendo decides, yeah, we're just going to shut that down. It's like, oh, no, you can't get Pedro, games on the Switch I, I, anymore. Pedro Mateus, here's the new Switch. It has two OLED screens. <laughs> Man, if they actually released like a, a DS Switch, I would I would buy that hundred <laughs> percent. 
You, you, you don't even know. You don't know, man. There were some really good games on the Nintendo the, DS. There was, yeah, there, there was very clear, uh, clearly a market there for the two screens thing. I kind of wanted the 2DS. The, it, it, it didn't flip itself closed. Yeah, there it was, was, just it was the, the, the chunky boy. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> now let's talk about SRB2 kart and why it's not kart racing. Well, it, it, it is kart racing, but, or sort of. But I, I had to do a double take. It is not actually Super Tux Kart, uh, which is what my brain auto-completed this to. This is uh, Sonic Racing, uh, what was it? Uh, Son- Sonic Rocket Racing or whatever. Uh, Sonic Robo Blast 2, that's what it was. And it is a Sonic Racing game done in Doom. Like, like mm-hmm. the, the Doom engine. Uh, they have a really large release out with a giant chunky release notes filled with stuff that I don't know or care about. But one thing they did add, which I think maybe some other open source games should look at adding, is Discord rich presence integration so that you can actually invite people over Discord, which I think is kind of neat. Hmm. Yep. There's, uh, th- that reminds me, I uh, mentioned Revolt earlier. RVGL has a uh, Discord rich presence. It tells you exactly on your Discord status which track you're playing, how long you've been there, what position you're in. That, yeah, that, that's neat. <laughs> uh, you need to, uh, man, I wanted to play around with it. So, you know, I downloaded it, then I went to the GitHub page and I looked over the GitHub page and it's like, Good luck, fucko. Here's your build instructions. Psych. I'm like, fine, whatever. You know what? YOLO, let's just run a make in this motherfucker, see what happens. It aired out with something reasonable, but when I did an LS, I was like, hey, look, there's a readme, kind of, and it had some vague library dependencies to which I, I pulled one, and I was able to get it to build a little bit more than it uh, makes, but out uh, some bullshit cryptic error that didn't address what was actually the problem. Like, don't have time to dig into this this afternoon. Runs and wine, kids, because that's the most stable ABI available on Linux. Go figure. <laughs> out of the box, I downloaded the binary. Just I was like, this would be fucking, there it is. <laughs> Just vanilla wine. Open gel, rid- yep, that works too. And uh, so if you want to play it and the controller picked up, that's probably the way to do it. Or if you do manage to get it building... Under under Linux, send us some build instructions. Send us yeah. a, send us some hate mail with like the the script that you use to to, yeah. to run that. Because <laughs> yeah, and we're old enough to. It doesn't matter. I mean, just give us the names, man. We can adapt. We can adapt. We grew up in the dark times. Yeah, I, I, if, I can figure out how to translate Google or uh, Debian packages to Fedora. That's same, yeah, enough. vice versa, right? If it's already using the uh, Doom Classic engine, why not just provide uh, the WAD? And then right. <laughs> provide Juan, the water, and then people could Pedro? use whatever um, source board they want to use, like GZ Doom or Chocolate Doom. They're going to do it, but they're only going to release DAWs. <laughs> if, 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 if they, they need to make a cheesy Doom, they just need to make Doom with like doom. cows and cheese. They made corn doom already. You can run it on John Deere. Well, I, I was just about to say that that would be a, a lot more doom esque if you were driving over cows in that version. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that's going to do it. Coming up next, Strider is always complaining about us reviewing Amiga games. So here's an Amiga game that we're going to throw chairs at. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where your kung fu is weak, my kung fu is weak, Pedro's is okay. This week we're taking a look at Kung Fu Ursan, developed by CMC Games, done on a custom engine. You can make it for about three bucks. What is it? Kung Fu Ursan is a 2D retro pixel side scrolling beat em up inspired by classic games and martial arts films. But you might be asking, what is this? Oh, my head's not up. The thing that you are watching, I need to cover my head unto, in front of God because it's the Holy Chairquisition. <laughs> Um, where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions with some fairly different hardware, and then give you a holy score, the Kung Fu master of one chair, uh, meaning that it's garbage, and the Kung Fu legend of four chairs means that it's amazing. Uh, so uh, we got to thank uh, CMC Games for sending us a key to this over Curator Connect. Let's get into the review proper. Pedro, how strong is your Kung Fu? 
Uh, not very, apparently. If you're watching the video version, you can see it happening uh, in real time, sort of. Uh, the, yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GT, not the GTX 1080 anymore, the uh, RX 6700XT, it, uh, well, it was a bit of a shit show to get it to launch. It full screened into the wrong monitor at the wrong resolution. So I kind of had to feel my way around to put it into a window and then expand the window to be able to see the options and set the resolution properly. I think Kung Fu San uh, knows the score that I'm going to give it because it keeps beeping aggressively at me <laughs> twice whenever it starts and whenever you, you uh, change a setting, it beeps again. Uh, and yeah, no, that shitty little dance that I had to do, uh, I had to he hear those two fucking beeps every single time it restarted. I don't think I ever... Few, uh, fully muted a game uh, for the chairs, but here we are. I just went into Pavu Control and just muted the game stream there. I didn't have to listen to it anymore. Uh, V-Sync is a lie. There's an option in the menu for V-Sync that it's always capped at 60 regardless, and I can tell you why that's a bad idea when you have a Steam Deck that, uh, say, allows you to cut the refresh rate in half to save battery. Well, it manages to be even worse because uh, if you try to play it on a Steam Deck and you have the screen set to 40 hertz or 60, but then you're capping it at 30, the game doesn't even start. It's just a black screen. So, uh... Yeah, it, it's bad. Um, if you enable Steam input and you're using a dual shock or a dual sense, uh, the controller rumbles for a solid 30 seconds nonstop at full blast. It is kind of insane. Uh, it's, it's, it's great if you're trying to get yourself off, but if you're trying to play the game, then it's not so good uh and, and its efforts to have low latency and lack compensation those are all options in the menu um it sometimes seems to have some rubber banding with the movement that's not a good thing in a beat him up that is as unforgiving as this it's not a good game in the, not a good thing in any game but it's especially bad here it also has sdl 1.2 libraries in the folders but running ldd on the elf doesn't to show them as being linked, so I don't know what the hell is up with that. So, is it fun? No. Honestly, I don't think I've ever played a game that's as hostile to players as this one. Yes, uh, the old games uh, that this took inspiration from were pretty bad too, but at the time, no one knew any better. Now they do. No matter where I look, I can't find a single redeeming feature. The movement is sticky at rubber bands. The physics, it takes for fucking ever to move between screens. I don't even mind difficulty. Just let me restart so I can try again quickly. Congratulations. This better have been deliberate, because if it wasn't, goddamn. One chair. <laughs> All right. Well, on Fedora 3564-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Beep! Uh, well, the resolution settings are completely fucked to start off with. Uh, I had to guess my way into the options um, menu to set windowed mode so I could drag the window over. Because what, what it did is it tried to do, like, the... Um, 7840 by or or whatever the 8K uh, width is by uh by 2160, uh but it only spawned on the rightmost monitor, so I only got half a screen. So yeah, once you get into windowed mode, you can drag it to the middle of the screen where you can select your actual resolution, which brings me back to beep. <laughs> uh, and then I went to uh, check out the controls, which are uh, insanely mapped. They have options for um, Xbox, uh, Switch, DualShock, and basic controls. Uh, and then you set them up and beep. Um, once you get into the game, though, the controls are simple. But god damn, there is a real delay between when you press the button and the actual move, which sucks because once your timing is fucked up, you just end up eating every enemy on screen. Fun-wise, I, I brought this up before. One of the chief complaints I hear from Striders that we only review Amiga games where, well, here, here's here's an actual one. And it definitely feels like I'm playing on an Amiga. And I got to agree with Pedro here. This sort of game was produced simply be, because of limitations of the era. And people look on these games back fondly because of nostalgia. But here's the thing, though. As computers got better, we could add things like responsive controls and the ability to change settings without having your ears fucked. Um, and here, and really having finished stuff like Shredder's Revenge and Streets of Rage before that, this game feels like such a regression in comparison. If you really want to play something like Black Belt or Karateka, 
You can do that in a browser. Archive.org has like Commodore emulators that run. Um, but the gameplay here is just so piss poor, unfortunate. Um, it's it's difficult not just because of like the shitty enemy placement, but also because the game just doesn't want you to play it in the way that you think you want to. Um, I think maybe this game would have been a little better if it kept the retro aesthetic, but actually worked to modernize the gameplay to make it like buttery smooth and really, really good. But they didn't. And so I got to give this one share. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you've been waiting for me to remember to cut on the blam clock. Ha ha. So check this out over here in Debian 11 with a 3060. I'm a little thread booper. You know what we didn't have back in the C64 days, ladies and gentlemen, our headphones plugged into the fuck mothering tape deck when it was loading a game. However, this game thinks you do because as Jordan, as Pedro pointed out, that's what you're first greeted with ear piercing, which made me jerk around looking at the audio rack. I'm like, is something wrong? Nope. Oh, it was a game. I got to go through that some more. Yeah. I had to go through that a lot more. I did. Cause man, let me just say this. I would have refunded the game right then. If I had picked this up, I would bought this and it hit me with that blast. That's how bad and sharp it is within 10 seconds. Like, fuck this. But I should say the first four minutes, not the first 10 seconds, four minutes and 10 seconds. That's how long it took me to get into the game proper. Kung Fu Ursan started right up on my center monitor, which is in portrait mode, which meant it displayed nothing. Not a force close. It was, I edited the I and I, how retro, right? To full screen off, and it launched in the far left monitor, but I was at least able to drag it to the far right monitor, the one set as the primary display. All right, that works. So my first impressions of Kung Fu or Sun was being sonically attacked and having to crack open an INI file in 2022. Now the Xbox One S X get tricky with a controller it did work, but the input it was delayed. It felt sloppy. I tapped that Proton button. I mean, it was bad enough to do that. To hit Proton. It's like, maybe there's something just wrong with the Linux version. Same thing. Yikes. Then I noticed some legit slowdown. You can even see this in the game. Like, I hope that was built in intentionally. You know, all the while we're getting my arse just handed to me by that first boss. I cracked open HTOP. Kung Fu or Sun had one of my 24 threads just pegged at 100%. And fuck all up. So maybe it wasn't intentional. Who knows? I don't. But let's talk about the fun. I would much rather be playing Kung Fu Master or um, ER Kung Fu on the C64. You know, my challenge for today was trying to beat the first boss, Mr. Wheelie Boss Man number one. I gave up. No, I ran out of cares and gave up. Same thing. Maybe my button mashing and or age. Maybe it's failing me, guys. Maybe it is. But that dude was like a brick wall. Something along the lines of like maybe a tutorial, a welcome. Yeah, that'd be a very welcome addition. It would be for those of us that are not you, the developer. Because I had to like, oh, jump. That's jump. Can I do a crouch high jump? Oh, that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing. It could just be the controls in general are bad. Okay. In theory, I could probably adapt to the control scheme given enough time. But why would I want to do that to myself? Um, Why would anyone? You know, I grew up playing these games, man, that you're trying to ape in the 80s. And there were plenty of terabad kung fu fighting games to be had. This is like a modernized version of them. Um, but I want to close with something nice. I do. Pixel art's a bit of all right. I liked it. I've seen a lot worse from a lot more expensive games. Uh, kudos on that to kind of say what Jordan said. It looks all right. I just wish there were some modern game mechanics sitting behind it but yeah you can pass right over this one ladies and gentlemen because i just wasn't feeling it or well, one chair and i foo or nope <laughs> i did uh I, I was talking about that uh might have been in the pre-show the pre-pre super season the this got me going down a rabbit hole i'm like were they really this been bad i'm like no they weren't they weren't they were fast they were snappy unless you were intentionally looking for things that just controlled very bad. And that is what really killed this for me was the control was really bad. Yes. It was slow. It was sloppy. It didn't feel right at all. Like I was moving in molasses. Mm -hmm. And, and that's then not you, you get that slowdown and then the game sort of tries to catch up and everything moves a little bit quicker. It's like that throws you off. That throws the timing completely off of the whole thing. Please, dear developer, don't let this discourage you. But next time, Pick a different genre to make a game in. Don't do this. There's maybe, 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 maybe try um, Pitfall instead yeah. of Kung Fu. 
something yeah, yeah that doesn't <laughs> expect fast bitey motion and yeah i mean it is 2022 you, you don't get a pass on this kind of stuff just because you put out a linux version like there's that i mean thanks for it this is our honest thoughts about it if anybody was ever wondering like do you guys just throw for no we don't um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no freebie for that. Uh, Jordan, what do we got up next? Coming up next, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, except maybe the Spanish. Also, some people use Arch. I'm not going to tell you about my felonies. I don't know if I actually have one. But hey, uh, no one needs to know about those. In which uh, country? If you if you'd like to tell us about your felonies and you feel like sharing that particular detail, you sh- probably shouldn't, but you can. You go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button. There's a form you gotta fill. Just, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe don't incriminate yourself in anything that you don't want the internet to know. That don't would pull probably... your penis out unless you really need to. <laughs> You can pull your penis out as much as you want on the internet, as long as it's not, you know. Developers and publishers <laughs> want us to review your game. We do the panel show. You see me people here? Three. I believe that you are responsible enough to do arithmetic. Come on the show. We'd love to talk to you about it. More on that later. Crowdfunding campaigns. Make sure you got a Linux build. Don't waste our damn time. Press releases. Send them to the email address listed. Email. Subject. And tell us about your class for limiting or... Five or six. Yeah. Six. six. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing with the numbers. Are. Yeah, you can fifty fifty on that, man. Like, <laughs> if it's before, it's four. If it's after, it's six. <laughs> I am thirty or forty years old and I don't need to deal with this shit. Close enough. Now we need to talk about Inquisitions. Like we yes. had the week before last when we were joined. Um but by Dennis. Dennis from the open source achievement thing and also the game resurrection thing. Yeah. The, um, um, remember the monkey game. <laughs> the monkey game. <laughs> mo- 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 mojo Tron. Mojo Tron. Mojo Tron. Pray, pray mojo-tron. for Mojo Tron. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, this, this one comes from uh, Kenji. Uh, and they say, The Spanish expect more inquisitions from you. It was very enjoyable. Much love. Mm. Kenji. Kenji. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, Kenji. <laughs> Did you bring that up? Um, <laughs> If anyone within the sound of my voice, Oregon, wants to try their hand at being a booker for us, call me. You want some alone time with Vin? We'll work something out because, you know, a booker is somebody who goes out, finds guests, talks to people, does all the stuff that I don't have the time or patience to do, like playing email tech for a fucking month and trying to pin somebody down for an interview. Well, that makes me playing. very upset because <laughs> I value my time. And I assume other people value their time as much as I value my time. And like, I would never jerk somebody around like that. And I've definitely tried to get other people on the show and we're talking like, oh, right. Yeah, I I know that I said we could do that. We'd never get to the point where I'm like, hey guys, we're going to have whoever on the show, but this is legit to, you know what, can we, let's just do this at Tuesday at 11 a.m. I'm good for that time now. Like, fuck off. (laughs) We're just done with the conversation. Like, I don't have time for this bullshit. Um, But if you would like to have someone on the show, ask them. Like, hey, like skin guess. They want people to get on the show, talk about their open source projects, closed source projects. As long as it's got some Linux sprinkled on it or put in it, we're down. To have Linux, that chat. Uh, the video game requirement isn't even like a hard one. It'd be nice, but you know, it could be game adjacent, if, man. If, if, you, if you give us your game on like an Ubuntu ISO burned on a CD, like a literal platter, mm-hmm. that counts. Maybe, man. So <laughs> here's the thing we, we're very easy to get in touch with i mean there's no process for getting on the show uh when we get that is on it's like yo dude come on show send an email like yeah yeah, good 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 that's it and just reply back and it's probably very criminal and i feel bad because we have as far as any podcasts that i know or live streaming so like far as our system to get people in and to have a real time interaction like conversation at high quality without like doing the Skype talk, bullshit talking over each other, looking like a smearophone mess and with like echo cancellation, all that nastiness. We should take advantage of that more, but we need some help. No, call me. You know what? Call Pedro too. (laughs) See, I don't want to be the middleman. I'm already the middleman at work and I hate it. Part of the reason why I'm looking for another job. Pedro has experience. I'm like, (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, I have experience and I don't want to fucking do it. <laughs> I mean, that's your default for everything, though, man. Come on. I am lazy. Yes. I, I realize that that is perhaps my biggest flaw. The second one is being a complete asshole. I'm aware. <laughs> What's up next? Uh, up, up next, next we got is, uh, someone from uh, Fortato. They're talking about yeah. Arch Linux. They say that the glibc slash EAC issue is really disappointing. I thought us archers would only go a whole year without Steam breaking updates, but here we are. The only rolling distro unaffected by this is Solus, I believe. Yep, Solus and um, our Endeavorous, uh, which they are deliber deliberately Su a few a tumbleweed. A yeah, a few versions behind, and I guess if we're including um, non-official uh, distributions like Rolling Rhino, the Ubuntu Rolling Rhino, thank you very much for that, Wimpy. That's actually a very nice, uh, very well done. That's uh, very good. Do you, do, you, do you think Fred Durst uses Rolling Rhino? <laughs> because he keeps rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> hey, man, sometimes it feels like it's going to be one of those days, man. He's just got to... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I look forward to the next email. I'm like, it never affected Arch. This is, uh, you're smearing Arch. This is not a problem. It never <laughs> happened. Because you got, trust me, I've run into the people's like, Arch never breaks. That's old information. That's in, like, get the fuck I mean, out this of here. originated in the Arch forums and then spilled over to the Proton GitHub. No, uh, no, so no. It's five it pages. You're, you're, you're working on, you're working for Big Not Arch. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> big, big Narch. <laughs> Narching. <laughs> Big narch. You're a narch. <laughs> don't, don't narch on me, man. You, say, you told me you weren't a narch, man. I trusted you. It's just pure narch, man. Pedro's 100% narch. <laughs> narch, narch. <laughs> <It's there. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get any weirder than that, so might as well. Cue the music. You can always get a hold to us each and every Saturday night kicking off at 7.30 if you're a patron. Hop in if you're Death Note or above to our pre-pre Super Chosen, but we'll put that up for free a week later if you want to watch that. That's going to be brilliant. 8.30 back here on Twitch. Eastern Standard Time. we got a schedule thing over at Twitch. Look it up. I have faith in you. If you want to get in touch with me at Ben Stone on Twitter, that's where I'm there doing the things, clicking on things. Probably not going to have a long, drawn-out conversation. But if you want to do that, pop in our Discord, pop in our IRC, or pop in Twitch during the breaks, and we'll be happy to have that chat up next this one jordan swan uh yeah i'm i'm nadrod shit it's no it's the other way around you can find me on twitter at the burning fool or twitch.tv slash burning fool you know i never actually thought how to pronounce my name backwards but it doesn't matter that no one really likes to pronounce my name around Zero here Oder, do it wrong <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah no at unaccounted for on twitter that's uh, F O U R because someone already had the number four and they're just squatting there. That that still pisses me off. That, But yeah, Twitter Twitter is nice. Uh, yeah, shoot uh, an at on IRC because it'll ping on Discord. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Six years ago, I bought that Twitter account from the dude. <laughs> How much? <laughs> squatting. <laughs> Five bucks. Uh, that's not bad. Hey, Pedro, that's how much it takes to free yourself. Five bucks. Time for some credits. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, yeah it, if SCO is to be believed, absolutely. Oh, that shit. You mean all this time we didn't have our SCO license? Perhaps no. <laughs> or we, our we Star Wars license? license? I wonder if well, I can find one gotta, online. We got to thank our uh, ex our advisors, Anybody. Omegas and Artharin. Or I think it's just Artharin these days. Um, no, no, Omegas is there. Executive producers, LDS, our Barbara M. Scott, Ms. Rode, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George, Pebble, Tomas Janunoid, and our little Nikki fans. Abstraction. Just abstraction. Nexus Pyramid. And uh, Sea Monsters, we have Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, and System T. With Death Notes, Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Morrison, Renee, Leonardo, Kresny, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2. Wad, Stephen, Dirty Dean, Back, Game of Tron, Dodgers, Etheris Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Cheesy Bacon, Kaiser A, Stein. Let me throw some love to our chairlings, like Linux near a good room. Mr. Alert, hanging out in chat. Ariton, Mir. Brezo. Who else is here? Danielle, uh, Oil, Hope, <laughs> Jim, Alex, <laughs> Minus <Pennywise>. Nine. <laughs> Steve, Hilo, the other Steve. Sacred AJ, Angels in Discord Max. earlier in the week. <laughs> of course, Strider's here, as always. Carol. Carol. And with it. 
Mike or Theron Lennox Neuro Aldeus Noctilus did John Eshep and Gamatron help in us say with the nonsense in the studio, you will forever be shamed on the fine upstanding cannibals. But until next week, ladies and gentlemen, die to fire. Or don't be a narc. Wait, what don't, are we doing? Don't a be an arch. Be an arch. No narch. <laughs> More arch, less narch. Be an arch. Five dudes.